If you follow today's tutorial, you'll learn how to design this flat illustration in just a few steps using Illustrator. My name is Kasmin and I'll walk you through the entire process from coming up with an idea to actually drawing it inside Illustrator and then posting it on Dribbble. Today's theme is going to be mirror, so I'm going to write that down on a new layer. You can use a piece of paper and a pencil if you don't have an iPad, but I'm going to do it here because it's faster for me. So I'm going to write that down, mirror, and start thinking about words that are related to it. So when I think about a mirror, I think about a reflection. When I imagine a reflection, maybe I imagine a landscape that's reflecting in a mirror. When I think about the mirror, maybe I'm thinking about the color, so it's the color silver. The first thing that pops into my head when I think about silver is uh, vampires, because vampires, as you know, don't really like silver. So already I can think about a composition where you have a vampire looking in the mirror and seeing its reflection, but vampires don't have a reflection, <laughs> so maybe that's not such a great idea. Maybe the reflection needs to be something different. With the reflection, maybe in Stranger Things, you know, there's the upside down, so it's a copy of the same world, but upside down, and maybe choose a period of time maybe the 70s or something. And now you can start thinking about a composition using all of these themes. So for example, I'm, I know I'm going to have a mirror in it. It's going to have a reflection. I'm not sure about the vampire, maybe just a character that sees himself upside down and its hairdo is going to be probably inspired by the 70s. I'm going to start sketching. I'm going to use the 6B pencil and start sketching. So on the left hand side, I'm going to have the actual character. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to have probably the mirror. Maybe Maybe the hair will be something like this. Usually vampires have like a really large color and then they have a cape. You can refine it a bit and then remove any parts that you don't particularly like just to get a feel of how this illustration would look like. I've cleaned the sketch a bit and I'm going to go one time on top of it. So let's open up the layers panel, create a new one. And this one, let's lower its opacity to maybe somewhere around 40%. And then I'm going to go with a cleaner line on top of it. And I'm going to try to figure out how I can get a better looking curve for each of these elements. This is the cleanup version. And again, it's only a sketch, so don't try to get it perfect. And of course we need a mirror, which needs to be a pretty large one. And the good thing about sketching with the iPad is that you can make copies really quickly. So I'm going to select that, copy and paste, and then take the same thing and rotate it around. Right here, it's way too close to the edge, so I'm going to need to bring it up a bit. Something like this should look good. Let's erase the parts that are going outside. Now this is the sketch. You can download it for free. The link is in the description of this video if you want to follow along. And let's bring it into Illustrator and start tracing it. Now that we've opened up Illustrator, we can start using the sketch to actually create the vector illustration. So for that, I'm going to hit create new. Let's name it mirror. And I'm going to use a 1600 by 1200 size. This is perfect for dribble. Let's hit create new. And with the exercise files open up, I'm going to drop the sketch into the canvas inside Illustrator. Let's try and resize it so we we have the actual illustration fitting in just perfectly. Let's go to the transparency tab, lower it to somewhere around 20% because we don't really need it to be visible. Open it up and lock it up so you don't click on it accidentally. And I'm going to start with an empty fill and a black stroke. So let's select an empty fill right here using the pen tool. Start from the bottom and try to create a curve here that's going to follow along with the sketch. So right here, I'm going to go very closely to this uh, edge but not click on it because because that's going to add a new path. I'm going to click right next to it. The outline is too small, so I'm going to increase the stroke size a bit. Let's make it somewhere around eight or nine. Now let's draw the face as well. I didn't really see a lot of illustrations with noses like this, but you're going <laughs> to see it this time around. Let's go and select all of these. Make sure that the stroke is actually rounded up. We need to make the color. Let's have it continue like that. And I'm going to remove this part. So zoom in, hit a point over here, point in the middle. And with the direct selection tool, remove it. I just hit backspace. And you're going to have this overlap. So instead of that, I'm just going to move it with the direct selection tool till it's not visible anymore. Let's complete the cape. And we do need the eyes. So for the eyes, I'm going to use an ellipse tool and just draw an eye there. Before we make a duplicate of it, I do want to take a look over the ear. So with the ear selected, go ahead and 
select the smooth tool, it's under the shaper tool and go over it a couple of times till you get something that's cleaner. So for the mirror I'm going to zoom out a bit and while holding down the alt key I'm going to draw a circle. You can see how here it starts to go downwards. I'm going to want to have it go straight down. So for that I'm going to remove this point with the direct selection tool and just continue from here straight down while holding down shift to not have that weird bend over there. I'm going to make a copy, command C, command F and then paste it in front. With the alt key selected I'm going to slightly make it smaller and these two points should go down a bit. Now I'm going to take this guy and while holding down the alt key I'm going to make a duplicate. Let's group it just to make sure that we're not going to have any elements that are left over and try to place it somewhere around the way the sketch has it. But as you can see you have all of these points on top. So for that I'm going to do the same thing with it selected. Let's double click to enter the group and try to add points for particular paths where they intersect with the other one so in this case here and with the direct selection to remove it now we have the illustration constructed so we don't really need the sketch anymore so for that i'll disable it let's create a color scheme real quick so i'm going to draw an ellipse here and i'm <laughs> going to make the the first accent color is probably going to be a yellow double click on it to start uh, customizing it maybe go a bit like this and then from that yellow i'm going to make a variation of an orange and then i would like to have a complementary color scheme so for that i'm going to make a copy this one is going to be pretty light blue and this would be probably the color scheme i'm going for let's save all of these in the swatches panel with the selected go and hit new and that's going to save them up as global colors the good part about global colors is that you can actually change them afterwards so after you've applied them you can just go ahead double click on it change it and it's going to apply that change in the whole illustration let's start with the background color i'm going to take the rectangle tool draw background this should be something light i'm thinking about a gray let's see maybe how that looks maybe it should be derived from this color so i'm going to sample it and then i'm just going to yeah i think this this should be fine and now one thing i want to do is select everything and while holding down the shift key deselect the background so i can actually group these elements out the color i'm going to apply on the stroke let's click on the stroke is going to be this dark blue and we probably don't need to touch them anymore so let's bring it to the front and disable them the first element i'm going to draw is going to probably be a rounded wavy shape now i'm going to take the curvature tool and with this blue selected i'm going to make quick wavy shape <laughs> i usually really like doing these kinds of shapes just because they bring a bit of dynamic look to the to the whole illustration and then send it behind now i'm going to start using all of these colors for the body i'm going to probably use yellow then for the face i'm going to want it to blend in with the actual background here the orange is going to be the hair switch to the pen tool as you might know i usually like to go uh, <laughs> like not perfectly inside this time around let's let's try and follow this blue yeah so the whole point of these illustrations uh, is usually to not stay within the lines try to create contrast whenever you can and for the face as i said i'm going to sample this color and with the pen tool selected start thinking about how i can draw it i'm going to start from this side with the nose and then just continue following on this path once i send it back this is way too close to the eye so maybe move it yeah this doesn't look good so for that i'm going to just move it up and call it a day so i would like to have some kind of a separation over here and then with the body uh, let's sample the yellow color and take the pen tool going to start from over here and maybe just create a wavy shape like this even though i kind of like how this looks let's send it to the back see how this looks there's way too much space over here for that i'm going to move it create a wave like that when i look at it there's way too much visual tension just because you have one two three elements that are overlapping and are really close so might as well just close this off and try to cover that whole area and then do the same thing on the mirrored <laughs> version as well so i'm going to start with the hair this time around i'm going to because i have a different shape here i'm going to think about ways to actually do something different and try to remember the way the ear went just because it's not visible anymore yeah so i like the way this goes over like this so it kind of continues the same same line that's what i'm trying to do with the hair i'm trying to have it continue the shape of that particular element for the face all i need to do is 
again create something like this because I'm going to send it back I'm going to take a little shortcut because I'm going to send it back uh, even behind the hair so it's going to be easier to layer now let's sample this yellow and start working on this area let's try and have it go outside the lines <laughs> just because finish this off send it behind and let's take a look how this looks how this illustration came out so one thing that i noticed is this part it called it comes up so for that i'm just going to do a quick edit what else stands out this wave stands out it doesn't look any good and also for the mirror i'm going to probably use the same color so let's uh, do that right now i'm going to start creating a shape that's the same color as the background just to mask those elements off send it behind cool so the last thing i need to figure out is this wave let's delete this just because i don't like how the way it looks yeah maybe start over yeah maybe just have something rounded something like this whenever you don't know <laughs> how to make something look better just simplify it and that will probably work if everything's good then i'm going to remove this and just go to file export for screens just rename it mirror illustration i'm going to export it to the exercise file so you can see it as well now i'll have it here let's take a quick look over how it looks now we can take this and move into dribble where i can actually post it let's hit upload and i'm probably going to schedule this up i really like scheduling uh, dribble shots just because if i'm going to have any idea on how to make changes to this illustration i still have time before it goes live so this is the actual illustration this is how it should look like for the text i usually just hit flat a couple of times i just write in and i hit enter i'm going to leave a placeholder because i'm going to create this video and then i'm going to put the process video there so don't forget to check out my dribble as well don't forget to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe for more because i'm putting out weekly design videos thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one bye